A few weeks ago, I did a video called What is a Blue Belt? I wasn't planning on doing a What is a Purple Belt video, but I got so many requests from people wanting to hear that. And as a content creator, you have to give the people what the people want. Therefore, let's talk about what is a Purple Belt. The timing for today's video is actually really good because my instructor, Roy Dean, just released Purple Belt Requirements 2.0. That video is a reimagination of his original Purple Belt Requirements that he did like 13, 14 years ago. I helped him film this course. It was a three camera shoot. It was pretty sophisticated what we did. And I got a chance to watch a preview version of it last night. And it's an amazing course. It's beautiful. It's, it's art. I mean, look, n nobody does videos the way Roy Dean does. It's beautifully done. And it's a very conceptual course. To get to Purple Belt, you don't need more techniques. You can go on YouTube every night of the week and watch endless technique videos. But what you don't need is more techniques. You need to put it together into a cohesive game that allows you to be effective at a higher level. And so that's what you're gonna get in this course. So I recommend it to everybody. If you're a blue belt looking to get to purple belt, this is the course to get. And for subscribers of this channel, Roy was kind enough to offer an additional 10% off. His course is already 50% off as an intro special. I don't know how long that special goes. I think only for a week or two. Uh, in addition to that though, subscribers of this channel, if you use coupon code ARTOFSKILL10, you'll get an extra 10% off. I'll put all that info below so you don't have to, you don't have to remember it. And um, definitely check that out. So what is a purple belt? Can we quantify that? And really I'm talking to the blue belts here in the same way that I was talking to the white belts when I did the what is a blue belt video. A blue belt is an advanced beginner. A blue belt is someone that has amassed uh, enough knowledge within the fundamental curriculum and someone that can roll at a certain level of effectiveness. The expectations of the blue belt are fairly low uh, because, let's face it, the blue belt is the easiest belt in jiu-jitsu to achieve. The purple belt is a much much harder belt to achieve. In fact, it can be the hardest belt in all of jiu-jitsu to achieve because there's a fundamental transformation that has to happen in the blue to purple journey and it requires a, a, a shift in mindset, a shift in approach, and not everybody who embarks on that journey can ever make that shift. A lot of people get caught in this kind of one-dimensional approach to their game where everything is a one-dimensional attack. They see an opportunity for the armbar, they go for the armbar. If the person defends the armbar, they reset, and now it's time to begin the hunt for something else, right? That's one-dimensional. Whereas to get to purple belt, you have to be able to think in terms of uh, multiple dimensions. If let's say you go up for the arm bar and the person rips that arm out, you're already transitioning to the triangle choke. If they hide the arm to defend the triangle choke, you're already transitioning to the omoplata. If they posture up to deny the omoplata, you're already transitioning back to the triangle choke. If they uh, are defending the triangle choke effectively, maybe you go back to the original arm bar to get the tap. And so what started out as an armbar attack took a circuitous journey all the way back. And that's what the purple belt should be able to do. And that takes much more work. It takes much more time on the mat and it takes much more skill. The purple belt is what I would call a solid intermediate athlete who is standing at the doorway of the advanced game. The brown belt is an advanced player uh, an immature advanced player. The black belt is an advanced player. Well, the purple belt is right at that door of being an advanced player, but really the purple belt though should have the advanced mentality. They're already playing the game in the same way that a black belt plays the game of jiu-jitsu. Obviously the black belt is much more seasoned, much more honed, their timing is better, their understanding is better, they, they're much more rehearsed. 
But the way that a purple belt plays the game should be similar to the way that a black belt plays the game of jujitsu. And that's very different than how a blue belt plays the game of jujitsu. And so not everybody who embarks on that blue to purple journey is going to be able to get there if you're not willing to make that shift. Um, and so that shift is really one in which you go from always looking for that next technique because there's so much more to learn to saying to yourself, and I remember having this thought as a blue belt. In fact, I remember I, I told my instructor, Roy, we were driving, I think in my car one day and I mentioned to him, I'm like, man, I feel like I know enough. What I feel like I really need to do now is go deeper into the techniques that constitute my game. I need to really master the stuff I know more than adding more new things. And he said, yeah, that's the key to the advanced level game. So that's one of the things that you're gonna have to do is you're going to have to start thinking in terms of combinations of techniques. It's no longer about a one dimension attack. Now, how do you learn uh, how do you learn combinations? Well, one way is you could flow chart out your game. And I'm a big fan of flow charting. It's a great exercise, especially as a blue belt working toward purple belt. That Because that part of the journey of jujitsu really requires some obsession. Nobody gets to purple belt if you're not willing to really obsess about jujitsu in that period of time. You don't have to obsess through your whole journey. I've had plenty of times in my jujitsu journey where I go to class, when I get done with class, I'm not thinking about jujitsu. But to get to purple belt, you have to spend some time really obsessing about your game, learning your game, figuring out, uh, you know, flow charting out all of your attacks from guard, all of your attacks from side control, all of your attacks from the back. Where's the connective tissue in all of those things? Where are the neighbors? Where are the shortcuts to get from this technique to that technique? Where are the, the connections that allow you to combine one technique? They defend, you have the next technique to go to. They defend, you have the next technique to go to. Uh, if you want a flow chart on a piece of paper or using some kind of flow charting software, that can be great too. I've used those things pretty effectively and it's a great exercise to understand your game and you should do it defensively as well. Um, you know, I, the way I think about defense is in stages of defense. There's early stage uh, defenses, which are mostly prevention. There are mid stage defenses, which are more reliable because that submission isn't completely sunk yet. And then there's late stage defenses. And so you can flow chart all that out it's a big undertaking to do it, but I guarantee it's gonna improve your game and it's gonna begin getting you into this mindset of no longer thinking about the game of jujitsu as being just one technique, they counter, and then you hunt for another technique. No, 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 you're starting to develop sequences of your favorite techniques and you're starting to program common reactions to those techniques. With every technique, there will be common reactions that you see over and over again. The advanced player and the purple belt is certainly someone that's on that door. It's sitting, you know, coming into that door of the advanced game. Um, you should have the ability to do that. And so that's gonna be a big part of that journey. The other aspect of the purple belt is um, momentum. The purple belt has learned to use momentum to their advantage in a way that the blue belt hasn't mastered yet. What is momentum? It's the ability to use someone else's energy against them. Jigoro Kano, the founder of Judo said, a man, if a man with three units of energy um, goes up against a man with seven units of energy, the guy with seven is always gonna win unless the man with three units of energy learns to add his energy to the other man's seven. If he can do that, now he has 10 units of energy to apply, which is how a smaller, weaker person can defeat a larger, uh, more powerful opponent. So momentum is the key to efficient jujitsu. Uh, if you decide to transition from one 
position to another and it's the wrong moment for the, that transition, you're gonna have to use a lot of energy and muscle to get yourself to that next momentum on, or next position. On the other hand, if you can learn to recognize when there's a window of opportunity for that transition and leverage that person's momentum, now you're starting to play in a very efficient, more advanced way. Momentum is the key to sweeps. It's the key to takedowns. Every judo throw, every wrestling takedown, every sweep from the ground starts with Kazushi. Kazushi is the off-balancing that happens when you're able to take someone's momentum and add to it. That's all Kazushi is. It's adding to someone's momentum in that moment when there's a window of opportunity. Maybe the person steps and before they have fully established their weight on that foot, you're sweeping it out or you're, you're giving them an extra tug or you're doing something to get them to, to um, step a little, little uh, with more force than they intended to or a little farther than they intended to or you're disrupting the pattern that they were in the midst of. And it's that disruption that allows you to then um, you know, add to it and be effective with takedowns. The purple belt or the blue belt on the journey to purple belt should have increasing ability to utilize momentum. And you can tell when they do by watching how fluid and efficient their transitions are and how well they're able to sweep people without effort. Uh, sweeps are a big part of my game because as an older athlete, I end up on my back a lot. And so a lot of times my strategy is to be okay from whatever disadvantaged position I'm in and just wait for that moment when I can sweep someone. And most of the time, I'm not even thinking about any particular sweep. I'm just paying attention to when I feel a shift, uh, a weight shift, a movement shift, a transfer of momentum and energy that I can then utilize to, to affect a sweep. Uh, and so the purple belt should have that ability as well. The purple belt should also have the ability to utilize their legs in a very effective way. In the real world out there, we don't really use our legs for anything other than to walk, a little bit of mobility, or to push an accelerator or a you know uh, brake pedal on the car. We don't really use our, our, our legs for anything else. Whereas in jiu-jitsu, um, you look at an advanced level player and they're able to use their legs very effectively to hook, to lift, to push, to scissor, to, uh, you know, to block. Legs are very, very useful. It's half the body. You might as well learn to use your legs because it's going to double your effectiveness. You know, and when you're a new white belt, everything is arms. Someone puts you in side control, you're just going to bench press them off. But over time, you learn that you have other tools and your legs are gonna be stronger probably than even the strongest person's arms. And so it becomes an equalizer of sorts to be able to use your legs. So the blue belt to purple belt journey is one of discovering your legs, learning to be effective with your legs, um, learning the movement patterns of jujitsu. Jujitsu is a movement art, I've said it before, it's an art um, that has quantifiable movement patterns. And so the purple belt should have trained enough to internalize those movement patterns so that they can be efficient. They're efficient at using their legs, they're efficient at those transitions, they're efficient at using momentum, and they have enough combinations of techniques that they can be successful at a higher level. So that's really, uh, what it means to be a purple belt, in my opinion. It's someone who's right at the door of the advanced game, ready to walk through that door um, because they've cracked the code for what the advanced game is. It's a game of combinations and momentum and all the things that I've, that I've mentioned here in this video. It can be frustrating to get from blue to purple belt. It can be a difficult journey. We've all heard the term, the blue belt blues. Uh, 
Everybody goes through the Blue Belt Blues. The Blue Belt Blues is, is that moment when you feel like you've plateaued. You can't seem to break through. You can't seem to get any better. You're coming to class every night and the battles are largely the same. You ask your coach what you need to do and your coach tells you you just need to keep coming to class. And he's right, you do need to keep coming to class because ultimately jujitsu is a self-directed activity. Of course, you're learning techniques from your instructors, but the way that you internalize those techniques and you become effective with those te techniques is really, is really a self-directed process. It's one in which you spar, you have some failure, you go home and you think about that failure. Maybe you watch some YouTube, maybe you try to figure out a different approach to that technique that didn't work last time, and then you go back to class next time like a good scientist experimenting with uh, you know some some new things that you've learned and if you have success with those great now you've made some progress and you have something to build on and so that's kind of how we we train jujitsu and if you're in the midst of the blue belt blues sometimes it's because you haven't made that transition from the beginner mindset of the single dimension single dimension attack single dimension defense to having that more advanced perspective that I, I talked about. And that can be difficult. It can be difficult. And I don't have a good answer for you other than you have to keep coming to class. Actually, I do have one answer, and that answer is to manage your expectations. One of the reasons why the Blue Belt Blues can be such a drag is because your expectations um, you're not meeting the expectations that you have for yourself. You're going to class and you're not effective the way you think you should be effective. And so it's that gap in expectations that causes you to feel bad about your game. You need to let that go. Expectations is a real killer. You need to simply go train and embrace the fact that every day is different Every day is gonna bring challenges. Some days you're gonna feel like you do great. Some days you're not gonna feel so great. I had a terrible night last night. I went and trained, my energy was low. I went way too hard my first two or three rolls. And then I just got, I got worked. The rest of the night I got worked. Well, it's okay. I didn't, it didn't bum me out because I've been doing this long enough that I knew, listen, every night is different. That happened to be a bad night. I'm gonna go back tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow will be a great night. So you, you don't wanna ride the roller coaster of emotions. If you do great one night, it's fine. You don't celebrate too much. If you do poorly one night, it's fine. You don't feel too bad. Because to get to Purple Belt is going to require some real work. A lot of people quit at Blue Belt because they feel like they've They've lost some momentum in that journey to purple belt. It's easy to have momentum early in your jujitsu journey, right? When you're white belt working on blue belt, the blue belt's not so far away. You can sort of see it out there and so you can work toward it. But as you're going from blue to purple belt, there will be a moment in time where you're like, man, I don't even know what it takes to get to the next level. I can't even see where that belt is. And you have to just have the internal resolve to keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up, even though it feels like you're not getting better. You are getting better. I improved last night, even though I got my ass kicked last night. And this is the journey. Manage your expectations, embrace the journey, try to make a shift in your mentality. Instead of looking for more techniques, go deeper, start paying attention to how people move and how you can add to their movement through Kazushi and, and, and momentum. Start learning to use your legs better, flow chart your game so you have more options. And if you do those things and focus on doing the work at hand, you will get to Purple Belt. And that is a significant achievement in your journey. Some people call the Purple Belt the mini black belt because it is a significant achievement and the level of effectiveness that you will have as a purple belt is one that oftentimes exceeds the level of effectiveness that black belts in other arts have. So it's a real accomplishment and it's not to be taken lightly. You should really be proud of yourself if you get to purple belt. So if you're a blue belt, 
I mean, I don't know if I've helped you in this video. I, I think mostly I've just said, keep coming to class because that's what you have to do. But I wish you luck in your journey and you will get there. You will get there. Keep your head on straight. Don't get too high when you do well. Don't get too low when you don't do well. Keep chiseling away. It's like that old expression, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You master jujitsu one day at a time. Good luck to you. We'll talk next time.